This video shows you how you can use the XBRL US API to bring down XBRL data into Excel. Now we're going to be working with the very latest version of Excel, Office 365, and in Office 365 you have access to their Power Query technology. So if you go to the Data tab, um, it's now actually referred to Get and Transform, um, but essentially it's using, well, it is using uh, Power Query underneath in order to be able to do that. In fact, you've been able to use Power Query to do exactly the kind of things that we are about to show you since um, I think Excel 2010. That particular version uh, was the first time that you could bring in the Power Query add-in. So all versions since 2010, running up to the latest version, you've been able to do this using Power Query. It's just with 2016 and 365, that functionality is baked in. So there's, there's no need to have any add-ins. Um, you don't need to use any VBA or, or anything else. It's just pure Excel functionality here that we are using in order to access XBRL via the XBRL US API. So what can we do with this technology? Well, we can run queries against the API. So anything which is in gray, and we've deliberately colored it gray, is a query. And we can refresh that to basically bring back results from the API. So if I do that now, it will go away and do that um, very quickly. And nothing's changed because we haven't changed any of the inputs. And these queries use tables as inputs, dynamic tables. So that means we can change the variables that go into the query. So for example, if we want to add another company to our query, Maybe um, we've got Microsoft, Google, maybe we'll have uh, IBM and we add that. And um, oh, what I love about Excel these days is sometimes it kind of just performs magic. Um, and that's exactly what it's done here. It has automatically extended the table. Um, it, it, it kind of tries to guess what you want to do next, uh, which, which you may have already discovered if you played with the very latest versions, and, um, and does it. So um, it worked out that we wanted to expand this table, so um, it did it for us, which is brilliant, just saves us a step. So um, once we've uh, changed our table, we've got an extra company in our table, we can just refresh the query and it will go away and produce some more results. And you can see IBM is now part of our result set. And you probably won't be surprised to hear that we could do the similar thing with items. If we want to bring back some different values or additional values, we can just add an item. So let's add in uh, revenues. And obviously it does its magic again and automatically adds that to the items table. Go over here and play our game of refresh. And uh, you will see that it has brought back those extra values, which um, which is good. Um, and another little bit of um, Excel uh, table magic. Um, if, for example, we wanted to see uh, a bigger range of years, maybe we want to go back five years, um, I love this little trick. We can just do a fill and uh, take it back five years and it automatically calculates what those years are and makes that part of the table. So that again is our input. So just refresh and away it goes and brings back all the values. Now we've built all this functionality up from scratch. Um, we've done some of that by building functions which we can then use as building blocks for further queries so we've we've done all of that and so that is now available for you to use so we've set up a template that enables you to get started. This template is available from the xbrl.us website. Uh, I've also made it available on my website so that you can access this. And I'll be updating this uh, template uh, on a regular basis to add in more and more functionality. So um, this is the way to go. This is how you start. And once you've got the template, the next thing you need to worry about is how do you manage to access the web API? Because you need to go through uh, authentication. Every single request you make to get that data needs to be authenticated and you authenticate that with an access token. And in order to generate that access token, you need four pieces of information and you need to get all four of those inf pieces of information from the xbrl.us website. So we're going to go over now and see how you do that. To work with the XBRL US API, you need to be able to authenticate every request you send to the API. Now, in order to do that, you need an 
authentication token. And in order to get that token, you need to gather four pieces of information um, in order to be able to generate that. And uh, two of those you get when you register, um, which are your email address and your password. So that's two done. The other two you get by going to the API page itself once you've registered. So if we do that, we'll go to the uh, website, the home page. And if we go to data and go to the XBRL API, and then if we go right to the bottom, we will see if we are logged in, um, create client. And you click on that and that will enable you to create the client you need in order to be able to send request to the API. And that will give you a client ID. Um, you can see I've got one already generated here and a client secret. And with those two pieces of information on top of your email and your password, you will be able to generate your token, which will then enable you to send a request to the web API. Once you are armed with the four pieces of authentication information, you can run the query that will bring you back a current access token, which you can then use in your API calls. Now, in order to be able to run this query, you need to enter those four pieces of information as parameters for this query. So in order to do that, we need to go up to the data tab and queries and connections and find where the parameters are. As you can see, there are quite a few queries operating here and here are the authentication parameters. So if we pick the first one, if we double click on that, it will automatically open it up. And this is where we can enter the first value. Um, so this is, um, well, you probably can't see it. So let me go to manage parameters and you can see um, that we have uh, the four parameters which correspond with these four pieces of authentication information that we've already picked up from the XBRL US website. So um, yeah, they are what are called parameters in Power Query. They are static parameters, which means they're not dynamic. You can't, for example, update a parameter like this um, in Power Query using like a, a cell as a reference. Um, they are fixed value, which is fine for what we're trying to do here. We just want to put in these four pieces of information and they won't change. Now we have that information that is fixed, so we can just put in the current values for each of these. Uh, and once we've done that, we can then come out of our Power Query editor and um, once uh, remembering to save, um, so we'll do that. Um, I won't get a save, but you would normally get a save option, obviously, if you'd entered any information there. And uh, once you've done that, you can then run the query that will bring back a valid token. And there's two ways to do that. You can right click and choose refresh. Um, or you can just press um, Alt F5 and it will go away and bring back um, this token. Now this token is valid for um, an hour. Um, so you've either got to refresh it regularly or I've set this one up to refresh every 59 minutes. So theoretically, you should always have an up-to-date token. I've found it not entirely reliable. The updates don't always seem to work um, when I expect them to. Um, so you may need to manually refresh, but as you can see, it's it's very straightforward. So once you have that, and if there are any problems, just, just to let you know, um, you'll get an error message um, in a box, so you'll know what the problem is, so you can go and fix it, correct the access token or whatever. Um, once you have this token, then you are absolutely ready to run and you can start to fire off some of these queries like this one here. Now, each of these data queries uses the access token query also as an input. So providing that token is up to date, these will run nicely. Now, we've also got some more queries on um, some of the other tabs. So um, here we've got some of these uh, single series uh, queries. Um, I'll explain actually a bit more about these in a, another video. Um, all I would say here is that just like with on the other sheet, um, anything which is colored is a table. So, um, so uh, once again, we've got three tables working with this particular query and three tables working with this particular query. And as you can see, I've used blue for uh, companies and a green for items and um, yes, a sort of uh, 
orangey type color uh, for years. So um, that's uh, the idea um, so that you can easily see um, where to input uh, values and uh, where the outputs will appear uh, in the gray boxes. Um, yeah, what else shall I say? Um, yeah, um, there's a few things to, else to talk about, but I'll do that in another video. So I will mention, though, the fact that uh, we've got this FAQ page here. So um, hopefully that will help you if you get a bit stuck um, getting started. But apart from that, that should be enough information for you to start to play with this uh, template.